morning, everyone. God be with you. I'd like to welcome you all here to Brunswick First United Methodist Church, and it is so good to be back in town to be here with my church family. And this, like I say, is the best church in Glen County, and I have missed you all. Um, I'd like to thank Kip. Kip's not here today, I don't think. But anyway, I'm very grateful that Kip filled in for me last week, that I remember all the years that Kip stood up here to greet you every morning. So I hope it was like a little bit of the past for y'all when you came in and saw Kip. <clears throat> Scott and I went to Italy to celebrate our anniversary. That's where we've been. And it was truly just an amazing trip. And we saw architecture dating back to 100 AD. AD and everything was amazing about our trip. But I tell you, one of the best things was getting off that plane in Atlanta and going to get some iced tea. It's like, <laughs> let me have something sweet with ice in it. That was wonderful. And um, anyway, I just wanted to, to tell you how much I had missed you and how wonderful it is to have such a good church family. And now let us turn our attention to the opportunities of the week here within the church. We will not be having MYF tonight. Kids, I want you to stay home and just dote on your mothers. Love on her and tell her how wonderful she is all day long. And the United Methodist women are having their general meeting this Monday evening at 7 o'clock in the Miller Building. The men's softball team is playing this week, Tuesday at 7.30 and Thursday at 8.30. And I, I don't have my, I'm not looking at my bulletin. I know one of the days is the chapel. I'm not saying anything, but I think we need to come on and cheer our team on against Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. So Thursday at 8.30. First Baptist is also Tuesday. Got to beat up on them too, but you know, just saying. Um, the SPR committee is having a meeting on Tuesday at 6.30 in the pastor's office. And this meeting is not listed in your church bulletin, so if you are on this committee, if you can mark your calendars when we get home, it's an important meeting that we have. Um, this Wednesday will be our last family night dinner for this year, and we've done a great study on the book of Revelation. We've all learned a lot, and we're grateful for that, and we will resume our Wednesday night dinners when the fall starts up again. <coughs> Excuse me. Church Council has a meeting on Thursday at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And today is a special day of offering in the Methodist Church um, here in the South, um, South Georgia Conference. So included in your bulletin is a special envelope. So if you would like to make a separate offering today, it will go to Magnolia Manor, Wesleyan College, um, Peace with Justice, and Golden Cross Sunday. So just mark that check that it's for special offering and we'll get it to where it needs to go. And our Vacation Bible School is scheduled. It's going to be June the 10th through the 14th. And the theme is Adventure on Promise Island. And registration forms are in the Welcome Center. And there's a, so we need to get your kids pre-registered so we'll have an idea of how many kids are coming. And also we're looking for volunteers. So in all areas, crafts, kitchen, to lead the kids around, all areas. So please sign up to help with this. And you can also call Melinda Hollington. Either call her or email her would be wonderful. And I think Paul's got an announcement. supposed to say. We're, we're going to be in the narthex after this service selling Boy Scout cards. I'll give you the quick update on Boy Scouts since we're in our second year of Boy Scouts back at the church, second year of venturing, first year of Cub Scouts. Um, it's growing and it's doing good things and they had the district awards and I can't tell you all the awards we won because I don't remember them all but we won a lot of them like the Bennett family won Scouting Family of the Year. I believe we won church the charter sponsoring organization won an award there were several awards to our church members and so i'm thankful for y'all's support but these five dollar cards they did them different this year there's several things that are one-time uses they're worth a whole lot more than five dollars and then there's reoccurring things like 7.99 pizza from domino's 10 percent off purchase of dairy queen and those kinds of things but we will be in the narthex after this service selling those if you would like to buy one and thank you again for your support
please stand for the hymn of adoration number 127, Guide Me, Thou, O Great Jehovah. standing, if you will, please, for our affirmation of faith, which is found at page 881 in the back of the hymnal for our visitors. Let us unite our hearts together in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Now, if you will, please be seated for just a moment. <clears throat> it's good to see all of you here this morning, especially on Mother's Day. Now, I failed to ask for directions on this. Are these, uh, the bottles out in the narthex, are they to be picked up voluntarily? Is that, is that how that works? Yes. Yes? Okay. Uh, they, you'll find an announcement in your bulletin about CareNet supporting, uh, uh, supporting the uh, Pregnancy Center of Coastal Georgia <coughs> and the bottles. If you'd like to take one and participate in the support of this, please... Uh, feel free to do that. And then I want to lift up and, and kind of second what Missy's already lifted up to you about the special uh, special offerings. Now, in our conference, uh, there are 14 special days that we take offerings. I like the way that you do this in this church. In other words, we can have 12, 12 months where we have a special Sunday offering uh, and one two months that we have to have two. 
to get them all in, and I've done that over the years. But you all take, uh, take about four at a time and put them together on a special Sunday offering day. Now today, Mother's Day, for those of us who have been Methodist in South Georgia for many years, know that today is the League of the Good Samaritan Day, supporting Magnolia Manor. And so the money that you give to Magnolia Manor, they're, they're very, very concerned. They need as much as anybody does who are engaged in health and welfare ministries. So, but that is one of the ministries that's supported here. The others are listed on the bulletin. They're divided equally unless you mark your check. Now, if you mark your check, we'll make sure that it gets to that particular ministry. So thank you for doing that ahead of time. And I thank you for the way that you participate in this. And, and we do four of these on, on one particular Sunday. And that way we don't uh, necessarily have to do one every month. You get old. That gets old. It really does. You, you get too used to it and you don't quite give to it. So thank you for doing it this way. Now, before we greet folks, do we have any first-time visitors? Now, I know we've got one first-time visitor, and let me set some ground rules since it's the first time that I've done this in this church. Grant Buckley is here today, and he is running for state court judge. Now, if you have a friend that you invite to church, I will be glad to introduce them. We're not allowed to say whether we support them or not. That violates our charter as a 501c3. But Grant sat, and I sat next to each other today. He was our... This past week, he was our guest at uh, the Brunswick Rotary Club that meets at the Brunswick Country Club. And I found out he's a Methodist from a long time back. So I invited him to church and he came today. So I'm glad that he's here. So Grant, if you'll hold up your hand, we've got gift bags for special visitors, first time visitors. No gift bags today. No gift bags. Okay, Grant, we owe you a gift bag. If you'll come back next week, <laughs> we'll give you a gift bag. We normally have gift bags for first-time visitors, so we'll make that up to you. Uh, okay, let's stand if you will. Greet someone standing next to you and make them feel welcome at our church. Remind people they pick their bottles up. And now if you could all register your attendance on the pad on the end of your pew. And when that pad comes back, please glance it over. Make sure you know the name of the person sitting beside you. And even glance at the, at the pad behind you. Make sure you know everybody that's around you. The altar flowers today are giving in, given in loving memory of Jean and Tolly Moy by their grandchildren and grandson. And in the hospital this morning, as of this morning, we have Bruce Faircloth. And, and Jane just said that he's doing better, but he is still in the hospital. At Wolfson's Children's Hospital um, in Atlanta, we have Autumn Lee Powell. And at Scottish Rite Children's Hospital is it Victoria Elizabeth Hughes. And if we can please continue to pray for our service personnel, Scotty Bennett, John Patrick Thornton, Brian Hayes, Eric Friedrich, Charles Wells, A.J. Schaefer, and Lauren Maynard, and our missionaries in the field, the Lovelace, Greathouse, Shirouse, and Trousdale families. Do we have other prayer concerns? Master Sergeant Kirkland, Ray Billy, Lily, Ray Lily, and I apologize for the confusion on the gift bags. Um, and there may be somebody else here that I missed uh, who's a first-time visitor. So if you'll come back, we'll, we owe you a gift bag, okay? Uh, there's several things that we want to lift up um, this morning on Mother's Day. And uh, thank you for the prayer requests that have been lifted up. But I want you uh, to know, too, that the children have prepared um, artwork that is down in the narthex uh, for you. Mother's Day artwork specifically for you. So you go by the, the Welcome Center and make sure that you see... Uh, the artwork that the children prepared. It's a wonderful, wonderful display. And then I, too, want to um, re-emphasize or emphasize, um, reiterate the announcement uh, about Vacation Bible School. This is a ministry that every church engages in every summer of the year. And it's an important ministry, and it can be a very, very important outreach ministry. So please uh, volunteer your time and efforts 
uh, let's make our vacation Bible school a great one. As we go to the Lord in prayer now, we'll take a moment to lift up our prayer requests silently and privately before the Lord as we pray. And this altar is open as a place of prayer. If you would like to uh, come to the front and lift your burden before the Lord, and then we'll unite our hearts together in prayer. So will you join me as we pray? Father God, as we gather today in worship, we're grateful we come to worship and to this sanctuary on the day that our Congress declared many years ago to be a day in which to honor our mothers. And Father, for those of us who have godly mothers, we're grateful for their influence in our lives. We, we know that we could not have gotten through life without the prayers and without the support of a loving mother and a loving father. And Father, we realize that in all, that in all of this, that, that in all of our recognition of a mother's faithfulness and a mother's love, Father, it comes from God. It comes from you. It comes from our Heavenly Father. It comes from our Creator, God, the one who made us and put us in this place. And, Father, we're grateful. We're grateful for any examples of love that we have had in our lives, but particularly for those of us who have had believing mothers. We're grateful for prayers. We're grateful for the time that it took to read Bible stories. We're grateful for the time that it took to help us to memorize scripture and when we believed in that word, when we got old enough, we understood that a mother's love caused the seeds to be planted in our hearts when the word of God says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so Father, we're grateful for those examples of love and service and many times sacrifice even though we don't realize it when we're young. But, Father, we pray that as we honor our, our mothers, those that are here and those that have gone before us, we're grateful. Give us thankful hearts, we pray. Father, there are many needs that need to be lifted up today. We come each to this sanctuary with a special need in our heart. We pray that you would meet us at the point of our need. Father, round our rough edges, we pray. Help us to love as we should. Help us to respond to one another in love as we should and to truly be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that as we meet together and enjoy the opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day, we know that there are men and women on the front lines facing, uh, maybe even facing fire at this moment. And Father, we're grateful for their service to us, to this country. Father, for their willingness to put their lives upon the line that we might en enable, that would enable us to continue to enjoy the freedoms that we so uh, enjoy every day in this country. So we're grateful. Father, for those who are on the front lines of spreading the gospel, of Jesus Christ around the world. We give you thanks for their service, and we pray your blessing upon their efforts. We pray that the fruits for the kingdom of God would be multiplied. Now, Father, for those who have physical needs, emotional needs, meet us again at the point of our need. We pray these things in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who taught us and his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Now, children, you have something very special to do this morning. You're going to help me for one thing, but one thing that we've been asked to do is to sing while you are coming down front for the children's time this morning, to sing Happy Mother's Day to you, okay? 
So as you're coming down, oh, and by the way, uh, your support of the Pregnancy uh, Center of Coastal Georgia, um, you're supposed to take the bottles home. Remember, this is my first year here, so I'm, I'm still in my learning curve. You take the bottles, fill them up with change, and then bring them back on Father's Day. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way to support uh, the, the Pregnancy Center. Okay, children, stand up. Here we go. Ready? Happy Mother's Day to you. Ha Come on down. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day, dear mama. Happy Mother's Day to you. Okay, very good. Now, I think we can do a better job now that we're all together like a chorus, right? Let's see if we can do it better. Doing it better means at this point, now loud is not always better, but right now, loud is better, okay? <laughs> so here we go. Happy Mother's Day, good to you. Happy Mother's Day to, come on, come on, don't give up. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Happy Mother's Day to you. Good, very good, okay. Give them a round of applause, mamas, that was for y'all. Okay, now, we have got some very, very special things that we want to do this morning. We are going to honor our mamas by giving them something. Now, y'all, uh, this, this is going to be for mamas, okay? Your participation in this is, is your gift to your mamas, okay? Um, I served a church one time where we would give carnations to, it was their, their tradition to serve, give carnations to the mothers on Mother's Day. On Father's Day, we gave candy bars to the daddies. <laughs> you know where this is going? Uh, some mamas came to you and said, look, why do we get flowers? Flowers are wonderful, but why can't we get candy on Mother's Day? So we changed it and gave candy to the mothers and flowers to the fathers. No, we didn't give flowers to the fathers. But we did give candy to the mamas. Now today, especially since this is my first Mother's Day with you, we are going to give you uh, a candy bar. Now, until we run out, you might have to change too, but I'm going to give the candy bars to the kids to take to the mamas to hand to you. We have special dark because special dark is better for you, more healthy for you. They say, I don't know. It's, uh, to me, chocolate's chocolate, you know. But anyway, we've got regular chocolate Hershey and special dark. So if you prefer special dark, you can get that. If you get the regular, wait till afterward and swap with somebody or come up front because I think there'll be more than enough, okay? Now, the first thing we want to do, however, is to find the oldest mother present. Now, if I get to the age of some of y'all, I don't care who asks me how old I am, I'd be glad to tout it, okay? We want to find the oldest mother present. Those of you who are mamas who are older than 80, hold up your hand. Stand up. Okay? Now, very good. Wonderful. If you, are, if you are older than, if you are 86 or older, remain standing and everybody else sit down. Okay, man, we've still got quite a few in the running here. If you are 89 or younger, sit down. Okay, we're down to two. Okay, I'm going to handle this, Miss Ruth and Miss Gaines, just as tenderly as I can, okay? <laughs> If you are 93, oh, yeah, Augusta, oh, my goodness, okay. If you are 93 or less, sit down. We're down to two. How about 95 or less? Sit down. Miss Ruth, does that put you out? Okay. Miss Gaines is our winner this morning. Now, I would like a volunteer who will take this back to Miss Gaines, okay? Now walk carefully because it's got water in it, okay? If you'll carry it back there and give to Miss Gaines. Now, we want to give a, we want to recognize the youngest mother who's present. Now, we have several uh, new babies coming into the life of our church. That counts if you are expecting, okay? It counts. It counts. Okay, now, if you are 25 or younger and have a child here this morning and or are expecting do we have any 25 or younger how about 30 or younger oh do we have somebody 
30 or younger. Okay, we have a 30 or younger, somewhere in there, four, five years. Okay, I don't, I don't see anyone else, okay? I need another volunteer now to take this back, if you will. Well, uh, Charlie, how about you taking it back? Come down here. There we go. Walk very carefully with that. It's got water in it. Just take your time. Now, we would like to honor this morning the mother with the most children in church. Now, we've got a few extra. We've only got one other award to give, but we've got a few extra because I just didn't think in, in my head, I think we might have some, a tie or two on this. So, if you have children in church, if you have two children in church, how about standing? Do you have two children who are in church? Okay. Woo, we've got a bunch. Good. Okay. If you have three or more in church, remain standing. Okay, getting closer. If you have four or more in church. Oh, wait, we disappeared. They all disappeared. <laughs> Anybody have four or more? We don't. Now, how many have four? Who's got Miss Pat has? I want to say what Jesus said when the two brothers came with the property dispute. Who made me a judge among you? <laughs> okay, let's say that daughter-in-laws count. Let's say that daughter-in-laws count. Anybody have more than Miss Pat? She's got five here, counting children and daughter-in-laws. No, okay, we have a winner. We will take that winner. Okay, now wait, wait, very carefully. Okay. Now you're going to have to go up the stairs, so take your time, okay? Take time going up the stairs. Very good. Okay, now, so we do have, now, I want to see the grandmother who has, now, this, this doesn't mean that they necessarily have to be here. I just want to recognize you. If you are the grandmother with how many great grandchildren and great-grandchildren you have, the grandmother with the most grandchildren and great-grandchildren all together, whether they're here or not, okay, we'd... I'd be interested to know how many you've got, okay? If you've got uh, four or more children and great-grandchildren, as, as an elderly person, if you would stand, I say elderly, uh, as an older person, okay? If you have six or more children and great-grandchildren, remain standing. Okay? If you have eight or more children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren I mean children grandchildren and great-grandchildren if you have eight or more Wow okay if you have ten or more grandchildren and great-grandchildren Wow okay if you have twelve or more Wow okay if you have fourteen or more Okay, we've got four hanging in there. If you've got 16 or more grandchildren and great-grandchildren, how far am I going to have to go, y'all? <laughs> how many? 20. Can anybody beat Mary? Can you beat 20? 22. Wow. I'll tell you what, we're going to give two, 20, one to Miss Margaret and one to Miss Mary. Now, somebody who hasn't done it yet, okay, sweetheart, you can do it. Let's do a little bitty one here. Will you want to take this one back there? Okay, now, where, where did she go? Uh, right over here. Miss Margaret, if you'll stand up so she can see you, sweetheart, you're going to go back there to that lady that's standing in the green back there. Okay, can you carry this back there? Okay. Walk this way. There we go. She can do it. Yeah. Okay, we have one rose left. Five what? I think that's worth a rose. Five grandchildren. You take that, take that up to Miss Kathy. Turn, turn around there. Walk, watch your step. Right up there to Miss Kathy. She'll hold her hand up. Can you go up there? Hold your hand up, Miss Kathy, so she can see you. Very good. Okay. Now, we're going to give out candy bars. Okay, we're going to give out candy parts. All you mothers, uh, young, old, and we're including all women of the female persuasion in this. Okay, we want you to have a candy bar this morning. You have a nurturing heart because you are a woman. So 
All ladies, women, young and old, please stand. Like the little boy, little boy said, that ain't no lady, that's my mama. Oops. Did I knock it over? Okay, now y'all can take these and hand them out to, now wait, 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 wait. Take these out and hand them out to all the people that are standing. I'll get them for you. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. There we go. Okay, take them and give them out until everybody's had some. Okay. There we go. Now you bring the leftovers back up front. Okay. Come back up here and get more until we run out, okay? Now as I say, if you don't get the dark the chocolate that you want, just wait and we'll get you your your flavor. Choir, we need the choir fed, that's right. Who will take the choir? Somebody take the choir. Take them up to the choir, okay, that's good, okay. In the balcony, we need the balcony. Can you take them up to the balcony? Take some up to the balcony. Okay, I still got a bunch of ladies standing over here. Okay, take them out. Aren't we having fun this morning? <laughs> okay, still got some ladies standing over there. Take them to those ladies. Okay. Okay. Do we have any more? Let me see. Let me see what we've got here. Nope, we're out of here. Okay, now who has candy bars left? Anybody, any ladies that did not get a candy bar? There's some standing right back there in the corner. Okay, bring the, bring the leftovers up here. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, all the little ladies can have one now. No, nope, guys, this is not your day, okay? This is not your day. Ladies, little ladies. Not your day, guys. This is girls' day. That's right. Uh, special, uh, this one. That one? Okay. Oh, hell. Go sit down, guys. This isn't your day. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Did we get them all? Very good. Very good. Man, these children are such wonderful helpers. Okay, now the children could be dismissed to go to, to Children's Church, and I have one other presentation to make on Mother's Day. Now, y'all, I knew this was going to take a little time, but it's okay. It's worth the extra time. I missed, I hate to admit this, nobody wants their glaring faults to come out in public. I missed Secretary's Day this year. Go ahead, you can say it. Okay, now, the thing is, uh, I usually get a little extra help with this, and th this morning, I want, Melinda, if you would, come please to the front. Nicole is not here, she's traveling. Maggie, if you would, please come to the front. Now, Maggie is our church treasurer, but she does so much in terms of secretarial work with the, with the treasury of the church. And if you haven't heard yet, you're, you're able to give Melinda your, your email address. She will put that into your membership thing on ACS, and then you can set up your own account online for giving. But Maggie and Melinda do such wonderful work. And Nicole, as I say, we'll, we'll give the other flower and the gift card to Nicole. And uh, they do such wonderful things for us in the life of our church. Maggie, come up here and stand with Melinda. I have in here, come on, come on up here. <laughs> I have, uh, I have here a flower that we're going to give them. These are cute little flowers uh, with Gerber the little daisies. Gerber daisies. That's right, Gerber daisies. And I didn't know that, but I'm glad to know it. And they're big orange. And they're big orange, which is Melinda's favorite color. 
Now, we also have a gift certificate to a local barbecue establishment. Now, I'm not into advertising in church, but a uh, $25 gift card. And this is from you as a church for these ladies and for the work that they do. So if you will, recognize them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, those who are visiting here today are going to say, those folks are crazy at that church. Okay, we've had a good time, and we want to honor our mamas. Now, how about if we sing just first and last verses of our hymn of preparation, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and let's stand as we sing it together. Verse number 140, first and last verses. forward to receive our tithes and offerings, we'll ask you if you will please remember our special day offerings on Mother's Day. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer as we ask God's blessing upon this act of worship. Father, we come to you thanking you for the good things that you have given us, including the good mothers that you have placed in our, in our lives. Now, Father, take these tithes and offerings as we bring them into the Lord's sanctuary. Multiply them for thy use as only you can, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated.
can remain seated this morning. Our uh, special reading is not from our Holy Scripture this morning, but from our hymnal, Happy the Home When God is There. Happy the home when God is there, and love fills every breast, when one their wish and one their prayer, and one their heavenly rest. Happy the home where Jesus' name is sweet to every ear, where children early speak his fame and parents hold him dear. Happy the home where prayer is heard and praise is wont to rise, where parents love the sacred word and all its wisdom prize. Lord, let us in our homes agree this blessed peace to gain. Unite our hearts in love to thee, and love to all will reign. This special reading this morning from page 445. The hymn writer got it right, didn't he? When he wrote the words to this psalm, this hymn, Happy the Home When God Is There. Now, there are mothers that I want to honor this morning that we have not yet, and I would like to do this. And if your mother has passed away and gone to eternity, would you please stand? Remain standing, if you will. I want to read this to you. It touched my heart. In tears, we saw you sinking and watched you pass away. Our hearts were almost broken. We wanted you to stay. But when we saw you sleeping, so peaceful, free from pain, how could we wish you back with us to suffer that again? It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God took you home. Let us unite our hearts together and give thanks for those mothers who have gone before us into eternity. Father, we're grateful. As we have noted this morning, we're grateful for a mother's love that has all of the characteristics of the one who loves us the most. And Father, we're grateful for those who have had mothers who have passed into eternity. We're reminded of that old gospel song that talks about the circle on the other side that is growing. And will indeed the circle be unbroken? And Father, we're grateful that we can know that one day we can be reunited with those that we have loved and lost. And we give you thanks for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and please be seated. Now I want to share something with you this morning that comes from a textual trilogy, which is the reason that we didn't have a public reading of the scriptures, and then a couple of the little things that I'll, that I'll share with you. But three, three passages of scriptures that I want to uh, lift up to you this morning quickly, and I'm, I'm mindful of the time, but maybe if you'll give me just a couple of extra minutes, we'll let the... We'll let the Baptists go ahead and get through the line this morning, okay? And by the time you get there, there'll be plenty of room. In the 20th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, I've got three, three passages of Scripture that I want to lift up to you this morning. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 23, we read these words. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons, and those are James and John, if you remember from the Gospels, came to him came to Jesus with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Grant that these, the two sons of mine, may sit, one on your right hand and the other on the left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, We are able. And so he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. And may God add the blessing of understanding to the reading of his word. The first point this morning, and if you're following along with the fill in the blank in the bulletin, a mother wants the best for her children. A mother wants the best for her children. Now, we have this this very particularly poignant vignette in the life of Jesus and in the ministry of Jesus, and you need to understand the time frame in order to be able to correctly understand where this mother's heart is. Because, you see, I'm fully convinced that there are some who did not understand. But now this is near the end of his earthly ministry. These people have been living and walking and loving with Jesus for three years in his ministry. It will soon come to an end. And I am convinced, as you have heard me refer to that Mary and perhaps that woman who may not have been the other Mary who anointed Jesus' feet at the house of Simon the leper, I am convinced that there are women who follow Jesus who believe long in advance 
of what the disciples were willing to accept. Three different times in the Gospel of John, Jesus tries to tell the disciples that he's going to Jerusalem to be crucified and to be hanged by sinful men. And, and three different times they tried to argue him out of it. But I'm convinced that there are those who heard, those who listened with a particular heart to the Gospel. And the mother of Zebedee's sons was one of those ladies. And she comes wanting the very best. And I'm sure that those who stood by, including the other disciples, said, the audacity, the temerity of James and John's mother. Oh, you see, they were prone to jealousy. They were prone to, to think more of themselves than others. And temerity, I had to look it up to make sure I was using the term right. And it means rashness or recklessness or presumptuous boldness. And I'm convinced that that's what others may have seen when they looked at this request by, by James and John's mother. But oh, you see, they hadn't yet inculcated into their life that great principle of the kingdom that it wouldn't that would not occur to them until long after Jesus had left this earth. And that is that in the kingdom of God, we learn to put others first. We learn to put others ahead of ourselves. And there's no one who knows that any better than a mother. And oh, you see, these boys' mother came to Jesus for one thing, one huge fact that strikes me is that this woman knew that there was a kingdom coming. She did not know when. She did not know how. She did not know where. But she was convinced in her heart that when Jesus preached about the kingdom, she knew it was going to happen. And oh, you see, if she wanted anything at all for her children, she wanted the very best for them. She wanted them to be in the middle of that kingdom. She wanted them to be next to the Son of God in whom she believed with all of her heart. And she wanted the very best. You see, what others saw when they saw this request was perhaps a, an arrogance and a pride. But oh, I want you to see this morning on Mother's Day what Jesus saw. He saw a mother's heart. He did not in the least upbraid her or rebuke her for her request. He did not indeed even try to turn it away or to belittle it or to hush her up. Not at all. Not at all. And I think of those various scenes in the gospel where a woman comes to Jesus and you see, she understood who he was. And she coming before him kneeling in humble reverence and adoration. Oh, mamas, please learn what it means to be on your knees before God Almighty, praying for his blessings for your children. Want the best for them. Want the best that God has for them. Learn what it means to give yourself, to sacrifice your own time. Dear Lord, it's such a hectic day with little time to stop and pray, for life's been anything but calm since you called me to be a mom. Running errands, matching socks, building dreams with building blocks, cooking, cleaning, finding shoes, and other stuff that children lose, fitting lids, on bottle bugs, wiping tears, and giving hugs. A stack of last week's mail to read, so where's the quiet time I need? Yet when I steal a minute, Lord, just at the sink or ironing board to ask the blessings of your grace, I see then in my little one's face that you have blessed me all the while, and I stop to kiss that precious smile. Mamas, want the best. Want the best in the kingdom of God for your children. Now, the second point that I want you to see this morning comes from a passage in the book of Thessalonians. And I read here, and I'm going to change the word nursing. It, the, the New King James has the word nursing, but uh, some translations translate it nurturing, and I've chosen nurturing because it more accurately reflects 
And so we'll read it that way. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. The Apostle Paul writing to this church, this new church that he helped to bring into existence, and he says, but we were gentle among you. We were gentle among you, just as a nurturing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also to our own lives, because you had become dear to us. I sense and see in this the apostles choosing to use the nurturing love of a mother to describe how he brought the church into existence. He didn't belittle them. He didn't chastise them. He didn't insult them. He didn't tell them how wrong they were in their current beliefs. But oh, he nurtured them into the kingdom. And if it wasn't for Acts, the 16th chapter, which is what this is referring to, you and I might not be speaking English this morning. And the church in the Western world might never have happened. It comes directly from the apostles' willingness to show a nurturing love to people who had never experienced the gospel of Christ and to urge them tenderly into the kingdom of God. And oh, you see, sometimes our children need that firm admonishment but sometimes when they've gotten older and perhaps strayed a few, little way down a path that's a wrong one, sometimes they need that gentle nurturing that will bring them back to the kingdom of God. And that's the second fill in the blank. A mother's love is a nurturing love. And oh, you see, when we, when we love someone, and I say this to you to give you encouragement as Christian mothers, if your children love you, no matter where they are in their relationship with God, because they love you, they will come back if you call them. They will come back to the right way. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I know some Christian mothers who have to live by that because their heart breaks in agony because their children are walking in a way that they did not teach, nor did they want them to go. But which way they chose. I love the story of the little boy who heard his mama, and Mother's Day was coming up, and he wanted to buy her a gift for Mother's Day, so he kind of burst into the lingerie store, and he said, my mama keeps talking about needing a slip. And I've saved up some money, and I want to buy my mama a slip for Mother's Day. And the sales clerk said, well, I guess we can do that. She said, do you know what size your mother is? The little boy stood there and thought for a minute, and he said, well, he said, she's just perfect. She's just perfect. And the sales clerk thought, and she said, well, well, we'll give her a size 34 then, and she can bring it back if it's not the right size. Two days later, the mama walked into the store and exchanged it for a size 52. <laughs> but she's perfect, you see. She was perfect because she was his mother. The third thing that I want you to see, this passage of Scripture comes from the book of Titus. The book of Titus, chapter 2. Now, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk on some, this is, this is the beginning to get in the heat of summer. I'm going to walk on some real thin ice here in just a minute. So you stick with me, okay? Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through, uh, verses one through 5. Listen to this. These are the qualities, when the, when the apostle is writing to his, his protege in the faith, Titus, he's giving him the qualities of a sound church. In other words, if there are families in church that are seeking to live by these qualities that he lifts up, these are the qualities of a sound church. Now, it's got advice for every level. This is Mother's Day. We're going to pick out the mothers. But hear this. And at some point this afternoon, I, I urge the 9 o'clock service. I said, when you get home, take your Bible out and turn to Titus, if you can find it. It's a little book in the end of the New Testament toward the back of the New Testament. And read all 10 verses because they're interesting. He talks to men. Old men, young men, old ladies, young ladies, servants. In other words, these are the qualities that we're to have in the Christian home. Happy the home when God is there, well, listen to it. 
But as for you, in the second chapter of the book of Titus, verse 1, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Now here they are. That the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love and patience. The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women, listen to this, ladies, to love their husbands, to love their children, be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Now immediately when I read that scripture, every one of you got hung up on the word obedient to your husbands. I know you did. And this is all I'm going to say about that. Men, if you have to ask or demand spiritual obedience in your home, you're not living the way that God wants you to live. And ladies, if you want to argue about spiritual obedience in your family, then you're not living the life that God wants you to. And like Forrest Gump said, that's all I'm going to say about that. Now let me tell you this. I don't always agree with all of Joyce Meyer's theology, but Joyce Meyer's will put it on the line for men and women as to how we're to live in relationship with one another with regard to the Word of God. But I want you to see what the apostle says about women loving your husbands and loving your children. Those are the first things, the very first things. When I have the privilege, and believe me, the older I get, the greater privilege I consider it. Although I worry and pray more than I used to. When I have the privilege of standing in this place and pronouncing a man and a woman, to be husband and wife. I consider that one of the greatest privileges of being a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I tell them in premarital counseling, I said, now when I make that pronouncement, nobody in this world, I don't care who brought you into it, I don't care how close your friends are or your family, there is nobody in this life that is any more important to you from that day on than the person into whose eyes you are looking and take that vow of marriage. No one on earth. And I believe that if we would all live to that, if we would all strive to live to that, and I realize that we live in brokenness. You, you've heard me say it. And I believe that there's no one like God who can take our brokenness and make wholeness. But I believe that if we would strive to live to the qualities of a sound church in the way that God wants us to live as Christians, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would bless our lives, bless our families. And oh, how I pray for those of you who are just beginning your families. May God bless us on this Mother's Day. Now I want to share a couple little things for you to leave you in a light mood as we go this day before we sing our closing hymn. And we're just going to sing, if we will, uh, Donna, just sing, we're just going to sing one verse of number 452 in closing. But here are these. These are cute. For six weeks, the little lad kept telling his first grade teacher about the baby brother or sister that was expected at his house. One day, the mother allowed the boy to feel the movements of the unborn child. The six-year-old was obviously impressed but made no comment. Furthermore, he stopped telling his teacher about the impending event. The teacher finally sat the boy on her lap and she said, Tommy, whatever has become of that baby brother or sister that you were expecting at home? Tommy burst into tears and confessed, I think mommy ate it. <laughs> Small boy is sent to bed by his mother. Five minutes later, Mom, what? I'm thirsty. Can you bring me a glass of water? No, you had your chance. Lights out. Five minutes later, Mom, what? I'm thirsty. Can I have a glass of water? I told you no. If you ask again, I'll have to spank you. Five minutes later, Mom, what? When you come in to spank me, can you bring me a glass of water? <laughs> Mothers, thank you. Thank you for your love. Let's stand together and sing in closing, number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
Father, when we are wholly yours, wholly yours, as fathers, as mothers, as children, as grandparents, then indeed, Lord, we can know that happy is the home when God is there. Take us from this place knowing that we are loved in Jesus' name. Amen.